Good afternoon, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gudrun Kunst and I'm Macintosh Professor of Anesthesia working at King's College Hospital in London in the United Kingdom. I trained at the University Hospital at Heidelberg, Germany, and after a fellowship in cardiac anesthesia at the Royal Brompton Hospital in London, I started my practice as a consultant anesthetist in London over 15 years ago. My conflict of interest include a previous unrestricted educational grant from Medtronic. We've heard five excellent talks about difficult weaning. How can we best summarize such a complex topic? I think one can summarize the physiology and pathophysiology of difficult weaning with five cardiac specific variables, which all need to be optimized. Heart rate, rhythm, preload, afterload, and contra contractility. If any of these variables is suboptimal or fails, we will need to treat this and optimize. Slow heart rate will need to be made faster by pacing or with atropine. Poor rhythms such as fast AF compromising cardiac output will need to be reversed. An empty right heart would need to be gently filled. Vasoplegia would need vasoconstrictors and poor contractility will need inotropes. In addition, there are of course other non-cardiac specific variables such as optimizing blood gas analysis results and optimal temperature. However, in order to be well prepared for a difficult weaning scenario, assessment of these variables will usually start before surgery by history taking, examination, looking at preoperative blood tests, ECG and echo results. Then there will be the team brief just before surgery as part of the WHO checklist, where we inform each other about techniques by the perfusionist, for example, the type of myocardial protection, type and volume of prime, and by the surgeon, for example, type of access to the heart, type of cannula, surgical choice of conduits or valves. All of this information can be of relevance for a difficult weaning of cardiopulmonary bypass scenario. Furthermore, the cardiovascular stability of the patient during induction and during maintenance of scene or anesthesia provides important information. And then there are unexpected variables which can make the weaning of cardiopulmonary bypass difficult, such as surgery-related factors, for example, bleeding, unexpected regurgitation or SAM, systolic anterior movement of the mitral valve, in addition, human errors can also be a cause for unexpected difficult weaning, such as not ventilating the lung or drug errors. But nevertheless, as experienced team members, we do actually expect these unexpected reasons for difficult weaning. And I would therefore call the scenario the expected unexpected difficult to wean scenario. A couple of comments about team and communication. The patient is, of course, always in the center of the theater. How often, however, uh, however, too often, the teams of the surgeon, perfusionists and anesthetists are far away from each other, making communication difficult. We need to come closer in order to optimize communication during weaning, which will be in the best interest of the patient. Above all, we need to include the echo images in our communication, um, which is best facilitated by sharing the screen with images, ideally including real-time 3D images between perfusionists, surgeon and anesthetists. These echo images, in addition to the view of the patient's heart in the open chest and, of course, cardiovascular pressures and ECG on our monitors, are the key to optimize expected difficult to wean variables. In addition, the echo images help us to diagnose unexpected difficult to wean variables. One last comment about algorithms and difficult weaning of cardiopulmonary bypass. We all know the difficult intubation algorithm, including plan A, mass ventilation intubation, plan B, supraglottic airway insertion, plan C, waking the patient up, or plan D, emergency front of neck access. During weaning of cardiopulmonary bypass and after optimizing rate, rhythm, preload, afterload, and contractility, if there's still poor organ perfusion and oxygenation, we can always go back on cardiopulmonary bypass after optimized heparinization. If we decided not to go back on cardiopulmonary bypass, we would follow 
plan A and give vasoconstrictors and possibly calcium. Plan B, we would give inotropes. Plan C, we would insert the balloon pump. And plan D, we would use ECMO or VAT. However, plan C and D can be avoided in most patients by early diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of causes for difficulties to wean of cardiopulmonary bypass. For this, as mentioned before, teamwork and good communication skills are essential. To summarize, we need to assess and optimize early expected difficult to wean variables such as rate, rhythm, contractility, preload, and afterload. For expected unexpected difficult to wean variables such as, for example, SAM, the transesophageal echo plays an essential role. Teamwork and good communication skills are other important factors when weaning of cardiopulmonary bypass is difficult. And plan C and plan D can be avoided in most cases. I would like to thank EACTA for facilitating this webinar, the board of directors from EACTA and EACTA president Fabio Guaracino. Mohamed, who is the chair of the Education Committee for his amazing organizational support, Jeff and Jan and their team for their technical support, Professor Deepak Temple for fruitful discussions about this topic, and the industry sponsors for their support. Thank you. <laughs>